Chess in the modern era is full of opening preparation. You memorize the first 20 moves of a game, and you try to prove some sort of advantage against your opponent. And players are kind of sick of this, so they're looking for variants like Chess 960 or Fisher Random. And the format being shown in this video, no castling chess. Computers played a lot of training games, and now we are going to have a match between two former world champions, Russian player Vladimir Kramnik, and obviously the pride of India, Vishwanathan Anand. In this video, I'm gonna show you uh, the first of their four games. They are playing a four game match, but before we get into that, I have moved the echo in the room is there because I haven't fully moved in. Well, let's just get it rolling. Only rule, you can't castle. So. Anand begins with c4, c5, and I should mention, this is classical chess. 90 minute, 30 second bonus. This is, everything is the same, but you can't castle. So we have a symmetrical English. Knight f3, e6, e3, d5. And actually, we begin with total symmetry. Uh, neither player choosing to, to, to break, and actually this is known as the semi-tarash. Um, but again, the rule of castling is, is upon us. And in many of these positions, because the rook doesn't have mobility by virtue of castling, you will see h4 and h5 by both players. So the first person to break the symmetry is Kramnik. He plays the move a6. Oftentimes that will come with a capture on c4 and then with b5. Uh, but it's actually uh, Anand who does the, the same to Kramnik and goes for this right away. So now if black were to play d takes c4, um, you might have a queen trade uh, and white gets a slight lead in development, but the position is still very much in the balance. And we have to remember that actually white can't castle, which is white's entire advantage here. So um, I'm not even sure that queen takes d8 is the best move necessarily. White might just go here because white can't castle anyway. But anywho, knight c6 is played, b4, bishop a7, and already we have the first kind of interesting moment. Um, Kramnik plays the move h5 because this is a very standard way to get the rook into the game. So for example, if Anand would copy, then we might get this move. And uh, then rook g6. And actually the rook is putting decent pressure on this pawn. Um, even, even more mobility. And not just uh, h5, but Kramnik chooses to play h4. <laughs> like, if white could castle long here and put this pressure, um, it would be really, really nice for white. But notice that the players are keeping the tension here with the pawns. Um, and this is kind of hanging out here. Now, here, uh, Anand plays something absolutely fascinating. Not his next move. His next move is just a very standard maneuver in such structures to put some pressure. I did just say this would be an option. But here, Anand plays a fascinating idea. Um, it's very difficult to see exactly how white can make progress. First of all, white actually could consider the move king d2. It's not a great move. Um, it's not a great move because of course there is going to be a capture with a check. But let's just say we had this position. Now king d2, king c1 is not the most unreasonable thing in the world. Um, and you might even end up in a position where you've basically castled long. And it's, it, it's just normal chess again, right? So this kind of getting back to a normal setup um, is interesting. But you can't do it now because black's queen is in the center. So here, Anand plays an incredible move. Rook to g1. And on its own, this move does not look like it does anything. But essentially, there is going to be a very difficult problem posed to black by virtue of this h-pawn that he's overextended. White is going to either play g3 or g4 and either open up this file for the rook or just have this direct attack with the rook behind the pawn. So Kramnik plays this, knight to e7, getting his knight out of the way. Uh, Vichy plays the move g4, and now, basically, if Kramnik doesn't take on Poisson and he just, I don't know, tries to continue with his life, like, I... Rotating the knight over here. After g5, he's completely lost, because this pawn loses a defender. So he has to play like this, and now h takes g3. It's an interesting move. Vichy could have considered this to keep the rook open, but then the rook could become a target. And it's, it's in some variations, right? So it's not so clear, not to mention the fact that this is just under pressure. So he takes like this and immediately justifies it and plays g4, g5. Now, Vichy's king is completely safe in the middle here. This king looks safe, but there's two problems. Number one, it's the g-pawn coming. Number two, who is the biggest annoyance to this king in white's entire position? It's this bishop. This bishop, when everything opens up, is going to have a laser beam right at that king's safety spot. 
So queen c7, g5 played, and Kramnik goes back to e8. And here, there's a super strong move. Uh, Vichy also plays a very good move, but there's a very, very strong move here. Um, routing this knight to the attack while it will maintain pressure on the center. And this is a reroute, knight to e2. Very strong idea. Now, uh, the point here is that if black were to play something like knight g6, counteracting this, it doesn't counteract it at all, which is what Kramnik said in the interview afterward, because after this, this, the guard of e5 has gone away. Remember I told you this bishop would be super instrumental? Danger levels. Hit the queen first, and then for example, and the transformation of knight for knight has only benefited white, because one more thing, folks, c5 is coming. So if, like, for example, I don't know, rook h5 were to be played, then after this and knight e5, white is completely winning from the strategic standpoint by virtue of the space advantage and the active pieces and the squares that you control. Now, Vichy here played queen d3, which is still a very logical move, of course, trying to line up this. Uh, Kramnik played bishop c6, takes, and pawn takes. Now, ideally, if you're playing this with black, you get to this position, so your structure is together. The problem is that it's still white's move. And white is for choice, and white has the initiative with moves like knight e5, e4, g6, to try to soften up that structure. Black is like a move behind at all times. So Kramnik decides to close the center, but now this knight e2 idea comes. And, and Vichy even here has ideas like g6, just giving the poisoned apple to Kramnik, like, go ahead and take my pawn. Yeah, go ahead and take my pawn. First of all, there's even lines where probably sacking the rook is good. But we don't even need to do that. Why would I do that? Now your knight is just the last line of defense, and I can just take this pawn. I've deflected your knight, right, from the center, and I can take on d5. Now, Vichy plays knight e2, and then bishop b5. He has to move his queen out of danger and brings his knight back. He brings his knight back because d5 is destabilized. So bishop takes f1, and now what do you take with? Do you take with the king or the rook? Actually, both look okay, but rook is a bit safer. King in some lines, queen c4 is possible. Totally not a human move, even though computer thinks taking with the king is better. This is a little bit better. Rook d8. And the problem really for Kramnik here, uh, well, rook d8 aside, is that it's just so hard to guard this pawn. It, it, it's a perfect situation of an isolated pawn with a square perfectly blockaded in front of it, making it really weak and making it completely immobile. Um, so, rook d8, rook d5, and uh, queen, uh, again, benefit of the king not being there. If the king was there, this would be a fork. But now black is just a pawn down. So, how do we win this if we're, up a, if we're just up a pawn? Well, it definitely helps that our opponent isn't just going to sit still. Our opponent's going to go for counterplay. And Kramnik begins to create counterplay. He lures in Vichy's queen and hides his king safely on g8. Now, knight to e4. So... Here, uh, computer very cold-blooded wants to trade queens, damage structure, and go into a pawn down position like this where black has activated pieces for the cost of one pawn. Um, but, you know, Kramnik is only human, and instead a knight trade happens, queen h3 comes in, and uh, yeah, there, there's some serious threats here to white. Like, for example, if white were just were to like lazily take over on b7, uh, bishop takes e3, dynamite strikes, and white is like on the verge of losing this game. Uh, because uh, if you take them, there's queen f1. I mean, it's never too late to lose everything. So Vichy has to be on high alert. He comes back to c4. Kramnik goes into g2. Queen d8 check, king h7. But it's like, wh what is white's coordination? I mean, white is so close to getting cracked over the head here. Queen a8. Now, queen a8 calls the bluff on everything. Um, and black here just goes all in. I mean, that bishop is absolutely trapped. You cannot take on e3 because just knight takes. You've achieved nothing. So black plays the move knight to f4. Now, computer here is a savage and wants to give up the full rook. Because if you take it, takes, queen e4 is a problem. Knight d3 is a, is a problem. Queen f3 with mate is a problem. I mean, there are problems in this position. It's not so simple. Um... But, okay, knight f4, queen a7, and I mean, we are hunting. Like, w w we are a move away here from, from, from a devastating counterattack. There's one move in this position, one move only, that maintains the balance for white. Otherwise, this is bad news for white. And that move, very cool, calm, and collected. You look at, what's the threat? The threat is that the knight moves and the queen attacks the king. 
what if we go here? And the queen can't both attack the king, get out of danger, and defend the rook. So Kramnik has to go here, and now queen to d4. You see, king f3 is also playable, but a little bit terrifying, because after this, you're not sure if you're getting mated. Vichy, clairvoyant enough, with three pieces surrounding his king, realizing none of them can touch me. None of them. It's like walking down a crowd, you know, a deserted alley in Gotham City late night. But you know, even though there's three people, you know you're covered. You know they can't get close to you. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling. I, I don't have that feeling. I, I'm always looking around. But Queen G7 is the mate threat. And now G4 is covered from anything. So Kramnik has to take the pawn and come back. And now we are able to play this move. And Anand is up a bishop for one pawn, which is a substantial advantage. But the bigger benefit is that his king's safe. His king is completely safe. Queen and knight are a good combo, but not when there's a lot of squares being occupied. So, knight to g1 check. King to f2. Knight to h3 check. And let's get out of there. Queen to g3 check. Let's get out of there. And now, Vichy says, oh, you're done? Oh, it's my turn now. Queen e4 check, queen e8 check, queen h5 check, queen f7 check, queen h5 check, queen d5 check, knight b7. He gave a few checks to repeat because you gain time on the clock. So there's no harm in repeating twice. If you repeat three times, it's a draw. Uh, and now just have to make sure that the king is always safe. Always got to make sure your pieces are playing defense. Black can create counterplay on the king or with the pawns. Otherwise, black loses this game. So black tries to create some counterplay by opening up the king, but the king is completely safe. And it's important to note that, you know, if you lose this last pawn as white, I'm not sure you're going to win this. I'm really not. Knight and bishop? I, I don't know. So bishop f6, never too late for tactics. What's the tactic? Well, if g takes, then we would have gotten check. Look at this. King can't go here because knight e6, Vichy. Look at Vichy. Look at Vichy's vision. Vichy's vision. And if you go to g8, only other move, then check. And no matter where you go, I take f6, then I take f2, then I guard the knight. Look at that combo. Look at that combo. Look at that combo. Bishop takes f6. Welcome to your Kodak moment. Oh my goodness. Bishop back to b2, and now it's easy. Black's got one pawn, and it's not going anywhere. Give a couple of checks. Queens are forced traded. And um, yeah, well, the nice thing here is you also dominate the knight completely. But uh, Vichy just goes and pushes his pawn. The only remaining trick really is like if you can get blocked and promote, but uh, it really doesn't matter. And here we have a resignation. Why? Because if the king comes and defends the knight, a8 comes with check and if the king goes up then i take you will not make a queen and i will or for bad manners i will make a knight and then i will still beat you because i know how to mate with bishop and knight but probably we would have gotten a queen so game one of no castling chess goes to vichy anand they will analyze a lot of stuff here but the symmetry broken and the space advantage seem to play a big role here uh, this might have come a little bit too late or actually, ironically, too early. Like maybe Kramnik should have done something else in the position before doing that. Or it might have come too late in the sense that White already had a really nice coordination. And maybe isolated pawns still very much weaknesses in this kind of format. And the power of the boost of the rook slide. So keeping the king solid and covered. And Black did waste some time kind of finding maneuvering and, uh, and, and trying to figure out where these pieces go. And... Kramnik never really got off the ground in this game. I mean, it seemed like Vichy was kind of a step ahead. We'll see how Kramnik decides uh, to play tomorrow uh, as he will have the white pieces but and what openings ultimately will come out of this. Uh, but this is Anand and Kramnik playing no castles chess at the no castling world masters. Uh, and I will see you all tomorrow for game number two. So let me know your thoughts in the comments and that's basically it. I'm signing off. Peace out. Get out of here.